In this video, we are going to use SceneTrack to record the animation of a Unity standard asset running around the stage. And then we will retarget that animation back onto our character. And we will go into Mechanum and tweak the muscles so that the animation works a little bit better for her design. So the fastest way to get her moving is to use someone else's character setup. And so you can either download a third party plugin to get her going. Or you can just use something right out of the standard assets, which is what I first do, especially before I knew what I was doing. So we'll just go into the standard assets, the third person controller, and we're going to go to prefabs. Now, and we're going to pull in this character here. This is a little Ethan character. All right. And I'm just going to show you how this character works. If you're not familiar, so here's this character. I can quickly press play. And this character is preloaded with a walk, a run, a jump, pretty much ready to go. So I want to take the animation off this character and actually apply it to my little deer girl character. And to do that, I'm going to use our scene tracker. So if you don't see the scene track there, we're going to go here, I'm going to go Windows, find scene track, and it'll just pop up and you can just dock it wherever you like. I like to put it off to the side and out of the way. I'm just going to clear these takes out. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is we don't have any objects being tracked right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to track this character's animation and we're going to put it on the timeline and then stick it on our deer girl character. First thing we want to do is we want to add a scene tracker to our third person controller. So We'll go here and we'll just type in the search scene track. We don't have to type the whole thing. We want scene track object. And what you'll see right now, if we refresh, we'll see there's only one object being tracked and that's the root of this character here. So I'm going to add children trackers and you'll see that number goes all the way up to 84. So we're now tracking all the bones and the geometry and any little pieces that are on there. This character is ready to be recorded. It's as simple as that. So let's just press play and run this character around. Give it a tick just to wait for a second. And then, oh, I'm going to go and then slowly walk over. Turn around and get out of here. Do a little jump, turn around and stop. Nothing too fancy. There we go. So if we refresh, we'll see that we have a take here, which is great. And I can promptly export this animation. Okay, so let's just export this character. Uh, let's take one. I'm going to put it into my FBX scene track here. And in here is where I'm going to stick my character stuff that I'm doing that I want to use in Unity. We'll save here. I'm going to be retargeting animation inside of Unity because I think it's a lot easier to retarget basic animation in Unity than it is in Maya. It'd be a little bit trickier to make this stuff work. Although you could do both. At this point, you could export this FBX animation and you could bring it right back into Maya and use the HIK solve to connect that animation up with this character. It's totally up to you. But I'm going to do it in the game engine because I'm going to imagine there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I want to start doing with her. So first thing I like to do is I like to add an empty object and I'm going to call this game scene. So this is going to be everything that I want to track in the scene in the end. Just to zero it out. Make sure you zero it out because it's going to cause a problem down the road. So I'm going to put the girl in there. She's part of my game scene that I want to have. So you'll notice she's quite a bit taller than this character. Now that can be a problem, but sometimes it works out okay. So you might want to just double check and make sure that it translates properly. So we're going to see if that works okay. So let's go over here to our FBX scene track and in here, and we should have this character that's ready to go. If you drag this character into the scene, you're not going to see any animation. This character is not going to do anything. Even if you press play in the game environment, nothing's going to happen. But before we do that, let me actually just turn off this character. If you want to remove all the trackers from an object, all you do is go remove children trackers and you'll see that the objects have gone down to one. Really easy. And then if you want, you just remove this component and then, then you'll see that we don't have any trackers. So when we press play, we're not going to be recording a whole bunch of stuff. It's easy enough to get rid of them, but notice that that character is not doing anything. There's a couple of ways you can bring animation back onto a character. One way is to get it onto a character avatar and have that an animation drive it. Another way is to actually use a timeline, which is more my favorite way because you can really play with the animation at that point. And it's a really cool new feature. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on this game scene and I'm going to create a timeline for the scene. So let's go here and we will go to assets and timelines. And I've already thrown in a couple. I'll just write over this one. So now we have an empty timeline. Great. So the first thing I want to do is let's bring this deer girl onto the timeline. I want to make sure that the game scene is selected and then we'll drag and drop her on and we'll call her an animation track. 
So there's the girl character. She's just standing there. Nothing's happening. Now, what I also want to do is I want to take this character that we exported in the FBX scene track folder that I put him in there. And I want to change its animation type. I want to make sure it's humanoid and apply. So sometimes if you have animation that you've recorded and you don't make it humanoid and you try to stick it onto another character, they're just going to go into fetal position. And that's because you haven't set the actual character mode. It doesn't always work that way, but sometimes it's the first place to look. Okay, so you'll see that this character is moving just fine. She's now inherited the animation from the Ethan character, and she's jumping along. And even though she's bigger than the character, her feet are still placing properly. And in general, she's moving nicely. The only thing I don't really like is how close her hands are to her body. Now, this is something we could fix in Maya, or we could fix it here. We have the girl character. She's moving around. I want to tweak a little bit of the way she's animating because I find her arms going inside of her body a little bit distracting. I don't really like it. So let's go back to the FBX models into the character. Click here, and I'm going to go configure, and we'll save this scene. Now what we can do is we can go into muscle settings. And what we want to do here is we just want to adjust the way her arms work. Now just don't mind this band that's sitting there. So that's the bottom part of her dress. Let's go to her left arm. And I'm going to go to her up and down. So we're going to be changing this. And here you can see the range. I want to limit this down range about here. I've already figured out the values for it is it's around 45 degrees. For some reason, I can't see this value. I should be able to see numbers when I go into the muscle settings. So I'm just going to bring that up a little bit and bring this one up a little bit. I'm just changing. You see that little blue, that blue marker? That's just changing the actual range, and you can see where the arm will cut off. And you can test it by going here and seeing where it'll stop. Now, usually there's numbers that you can see, but they're not showing up for some reason. Let's go apply. Done. Now, hopefully what should happen when we look at the timeline animation is that her arms should not penetrate her body so badly. There you go. So you see she runs a little wider. And I'm going to do that because I think the cloth simulation will get very messy if her arms are constantly inside her body. So I'm fine with that right now. It's something I can tweak a little bit later. But So you get the idea. You can really start playing with a lot of these values to get the character to move just slightly differently, especially if you're using canned animation and you're using it on a lot of different characters. It's a really handy technique to just modify some of the movements so it doesn't all look the same. All right, so in the next video, we will take a look at playing a little more with the timeline and adding additional animations to what we just recorded.